Hello people, in this video we want to look at Pneumocystis zerovaceae. This is nothing but a yeast-like fungus. So what is this Pneumocystis zerovaceae? It is a yeast-like fungus. So first of all you should understand what is it? It's a fungus. Is it yeast-like? Proper yeast? No, it's yeast-like. Means what? First let's crack that. <coughs> So you can see in fungus you have yeast, yeast-like, molds and dimorphic. In yeast-like you have candida and this pneumocystis zero VC. And look at this. See how yeast is it buds. And then you have the other one which are like molds where you have this hyphae and all mycelium and all that. So it is neither here nor there. That becomes what? Yeast-like. Very good. So this is yeast-like. In Canada also you have yeast like, okay, they transform kind of a thing. Let's not go into much about that. Let's come back to Pneumocystis zero AC. <clears throat> it's a yeast like fungus. This will cause pneumo pneumonia and especially in whom? This is very important to write. It causes pneumonia in immunocompromise, that is like AIDS, etc. Immunocompromise is any person who has AIDS or um, he's taking steroids or <coughs> many other conditions like sometimes pregnancy also immunocompromised or state, right? So what will happen once this fungus goes and sits in the lungs? There will be bilateral infiltrates. It won't leave both the sides equally. It's affecting. Very, very good it is, no? Bilateral little infiltrate, interstitial bilateral infiltrate. So what will happen to this guy? He can't breathe. So he'll have difficulty breathing. Dyspnea. And this is what type of dyspnea? Progressive. As in when it is proceeding, it is becoming worse. And it is less than 12 weeks this person will have this uh, dyspnea. Before 12 weeks, he'll be totally fine. Dry cough fever are common. Okay. <coughs> so just look at this uh, table here. They are saying how is it different if you have bacterial pneumonia or pneumocystis zerovaceae or pulmonary tuberculosis. Basically what they are trying to say here is <coughs> in this it is subacute. That's why they said 12 weeks. It's not sudden. It's not chronic. Somewhere in between kind of thing. Subacute. Dyspnea is prominent. White cell count is normal but in bacterial infection it could be more. So it is very difficult to identify right? If white cell count is normal. In the chest x-ray you will see infiltrate. Bilateral infiltrate mostly. And that's what you will see. <coughs> so now let us go to X-ray. We already told you bilateral infiltrates, ground glass interstitial in infiltrates. There will be something called as pneumato seals. So these will rupture and cause pneumothorax. Hence the name. You can say pneumocystis zerovaceae. Pneumo is what air. So there can be pneumato seals which will rupture and it will lead to pneumothorax. What is pneumothorax? Air in the pleural cavity, right? That is pneumothorax. That time the lung cannot, what do you say, expand. So the person will have dyspnea. He is not getting enough oxygen. How will you diagnose? We already told you. Take x-ray and all that. So, <coughs> you can take a bronchoalveolar lavage and then you can check that. You can do an immunofluorescence of that. Okay. <coughs> you can also do a PCR, silver stain of all this. Ba bronco alveolar lavage you can take or induced sputum so you will have to take the sputum and do all these tests so you should not take spontaneously produced sputum you should make that guy produce more sputum and then you should take it looks like and then what is the treatment this is what they are expecting you to write in the exam high dose cotrimoxazole this is what they are expecting you to write in the exam otherwise what is that in the name itself it is that pneumocystis zero vc pneumonia everything is there in the name only what they want you to write is yeast like fungus. It will cause pneumothorax. High dose cotrimoxazole is the treatment. That's it. That's all they are expecting you to say. Okay. So, <clears throat> how much cotrimoxazole you will give? So, so much you can give for 21 days. So, anyways, we are not going into the detail of the dose. If you want, you can look at it. What is cotrimoxazole? It is nothing but <clears throat> sulfamethoxazole, sulfamethoxazole, that is nothing but sulfonamide plus trimethoprim, which is a diamino pi pyrimidine. So you should understand that this is a combination of two drugs, sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim. So how much of each? 
400 of sulfa methoxazole and 80 of trimethoprim. Okay, this is very important. 400 is to 80. So basically, it is bactericidal. It will kill the bacteria. <coughs> While both of these are individually bacteriostatic, cotrimoxazole is bactericidal. Okay. So what does it do? It will cause sequential block of fo folate metabolism. So you, you have already seen this, right? <coughs> that uh, folate synthesis, two steps. Both the steps sequentially are stopped. Sulfonamide, trimethoprim. Okay. So, what is bacteriostatic individually? Together it is becoming bactericidal. That's enough for now. You have learnt about Pneumocystis deravici. That's it for now guys. Bye bye. Guys, one thing to notice is cotrimoxazole is what? Antibiotic, right? It is talking about bacteria. The thing is, Pneumocystis deravici is fungus, yeast-like. So the thing is, it does not respond to, uh, to antifungal treatment. So you are giving antibiotic. Okay. So this is what is the difference here. Cotrimoxazole is actually antibiotic. So you, it does not respond to antifungal treatment. Okay.